Hey, what's good everyone? Shade is back with another video and yet again, I'm not gonna give you gameplay because this is gonna be more like a follow-up to the video I recently published about uh, the fact that it's getting too much. Uh, because Arena Breakout team has been reaching out and asking for feedback, which is actually pretty cool, guys. I mean, I have a small channel. Um, I appreciate all of the 4,000 subs I have, but still compared to the big dogs, my channel is small. So it's, you know, it's a nice feeling. It's much appreciated they, that they ask for my feedback. And I want to present that feedback to you because, you know, I see the comments, I reply to some of them, but you don't have like a holistic view on what I think about the game. I just want to share it with you. And then in the comment section, you can kind of, you know, uh, tell me if you if you feel the same or if you have other type of recommendations. So the previous one was more like addressing the issue and this is gonna be more about, you know, how, how to fix that or what my recommendations are. Let's go. No, 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 no. We actually cannot start before I promote my Alienware PC video. Um, unfortunately, it only got 300 views or close to 400. And even guys, if you don't care about the event or if you don't care about me, uh, you know, just, just watch the video. It's a two minute thing and my chances to win that event are like literally zero. So I don't expect to win that PC. But if you watch the video, if you support me, it means a lot to me. I had so much fun recording that and I hope um, you're gonna like the outcome of that video. It's actually a song I was rapping for votes. So check it out. So here's the feedback. It's not super long. I'm gonna try to read it out quickly and uh, add some comments here and there. And the whole thing started with AB team reaching out to me specifically about loot derby but i grabbed the chance and basically addressed a bit more like generally the game modes and added some recommendations so first of all let me thank you and the team for having the opportunity to provide feedback thanks for listening to me blah 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 uh, you know i'm always that nice and gentle baby because as a project manager and program manager i've been firing out thousands of emails so it's like a habit i do let's jump straight into the like the juicy part, event and game modes in general. Before I dive into Loot Derby, I'd like to share a couple of thoughts on events and temporary game modes in general based on my personal experience and viewer comments. So this is like, you know, stuff I see in the comments from you guys and also, uh, you know, bundled with my personal feelings. Too many game modes uh, happening in parallel, two or three, and most players don't have time to enjoy them all. Um, this is, uh, I believe, like an issue on top of the core game modes, Lockdown, Forbidden, we have um, three running at the same time. For me, it's definitely too much. I don't know about you, but I think you would agree that one or two events at max would be enough. The rewards players can get from temporary game modes are not tempting enough. TDM, like team elimination for 10K was expensive for many, even skilled players uh, there's a typo, but anyways, even skilled players couldn't really benefit from that mode because, you know, you just had to, like, like almost win all of the games uh, to, to earn some money. And, like, the time you need to invest into that, it was absolutely not worth, you know, from a money perspective. It was still good practice, but, I don't know. I'm gonna get back to that uh, further down below, like, the team elimination, so let's move on. Some selected temporary game modes could be permanent or could become permanent. There's lots of development effort put into them and it's so sad to see that they are getting removed. Because of this, many don't even bother about these game modes anymore. Just think about the night modes, for example. Like, like why can't we have that as a, as a permanent thing or, or team elimination even? I mean, it if it would be more polished, uh, you know, why can't we have like the core elements in the game and then have team dead match as a permanent thing maybe with uh you know I i'm not gonna spoil it because I'm, I'm i'm listing this further down below um my personal opinion about game modes there are two two main types of players the first group is seeking the hardcore experience the other ones asking for sound prints to be removed and higher lockdown forbidden requirements and changes that make the game even harder at the beginning in season one, we had way more hardcore gamers than what we have now at the moment, or somehow the hardcore gamers like 
eventually quit or transformed into more casual. Um, but I, what I wanted to say is that, in my opinion, we have by now more casual players than the real hardcore gamers. I didn't see any numbers, I didn't do any research, but that's, that's my gut feeling. The other group, which I believe is bigger than the hardcore fans, uh, wants to see modes and changes that quickly put them into action, which is a uh, change. It's not a change. I should have checked this document before I send it over. So it puts them into action, which is a um, quick chance to secure some extra coins. So basically, um, if there would be a team mode, which you can start without having to spend too much time on loadouts and you can eventually walk out with, with extra money. I think the casual players would really enjoy that. Like the rush mode, for example. I think, I think those type of things are actually more for casual players. These two aspects clash and I don't see a way to satisfy both with one specific game mode. This is the reason why I recommended in my video to clearly separate the two. So hardcore players are not that interested in playing Isolation or TDM and Battle Royale. Like that's, that's like, I think the tip of the iceberg. So they absolutely don't want to see that. Vice casual players, um, you know, like it. But even for casual players, it's not that tempting because it's not that rewarding. So here are some recommendations. Hardcore, increase the loadout requirements of Lockdown and Forbidden to approximately 150k and 250k to avoid what's happening now. Legend players going into Lockdown with trash equipment and trying to hunt down people who are risking just simply more. It, it's ruining the game. It, it forces people to rat and camp. And it's not the same as sniping or being tactical eventually remove the sound prints again a typo i should have checked this but i don't care anymore uh solo duo hardcore experience besides keeping the squads yeah i think I, why can't we have that like even if you're not gonna have solo but no i mean what's what's hindering the team from adding solo duo and squad i think it would make the game more fair if we had like a duo mode and solo mode and you know, nobody would get harmed, but those who don't want to play full squads with randoms, I think they would benefit from that. And also this would lead to having less uh, team kills and, uh, and loot goblins and all kind of stuff. Random better conditions, I think many of you would love that. And uh, with the caviar, the thermos should be uh, a bit less effective during daytime and um, eventually start in daylight, but it's getting dark during the game. That would be really fun and um, exciting. For casual players, my, and, and this, this is not like the whole list of, uh, of recommendations, it's more like on a high level or the, the, the things that could be quickly introduced. Casual, normal maps with sound prints, no requirements, but uh, a top loadout limit. Um, which means that you wouldn't be able to bring your thermal into normal mode to have the ops marker removed. I think, you know, that's that, this would be required to um, provide a good game experience to those who just recently joined the game or are just simply not that good at the game. And, uh, you know, it's it actually sucks to go into normal farm and then being killed by a guy who is wearing thermos or even if it if he ha doesn't have thermos like a high-end equipment um yeah to abuse it, this game mode is not i mean to ensure that this game mode is not abused by chance also it could not be used to remove yeah i covered that permanent tdm with better loadouts so yeah <laughs> i mean guys really the, the, the loadouts we had in the team elimination they just suck because of the ammunition it's not even you know, getting close to the real experience we, we have in the core um, game modes. So we don't really play with T1 ammo, as, <laughs> except if we, if we, you know, if we want to troll or something. So why not have TDM with decent loadouts to make it more strategic so that people cannot just, you know, start running and shooting like headless chickens. And, and and I think it could be exciting if there would be a, a new rank system introduced, which is 
not the regular rank mode rank ranking system so you would still have that and then there would be a tdm uh, rank system for more casual players and this would be kind of the, the main separation of of things in general and then on top we would have the money grinder modes like the rush mode um, which also could be permanent so i listed this uh, in this group because i feel the rush modes where you don't put your own um, equipment into use could be permanent um, it could be even the case that we had these rush modes but not with the predefined equipments with your own equipment but anyways i really miss the northridge hotel um, rush mode like the small map the armory bunker that would be really nice and farm motel only that would be also exciting like you know just having the motel and the like the near surrounding may eventually valley villa or, or or port so i think many would love if we had that because this is like 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 what i said putting them into instant action not everybody has the time or patience to play um you know 40 minute games on on on, you know, on on the regular maps and covered besides having the normal covered um i would consider the isolation mode as a as a you know, special version of of covered and instead of using our main characters or operators i would consider that as a covered mode if these were uh, the permanent game modes there would be still some space um not place but space to have one temporary game mode at a time my take on this would be to make the extra game modes fun not sweaty but yet rewarding which means that the extra game modes like battle royale let's assume we're gonna have that you know for a while then regardless of what type of of player you are hardcore or casual the extra event should be fun for everybody and it should be rewarding that's my that's my take on this instead of having always new game modes i'd rather focus on polishing the core to make it better and better for example the map changes are awesome um and i'm not refer i'm not referring to the actual tvs map changes i'm referring to the fact that it's changing like you know farm is gonna change armory is gonna change in season six we had changes on tv station we had changes in the past on northridge and this is cool because i don't feel that we need more maps and this is what i'm explaining here uh with these set of maps i don't feel that we need a, a new map at this point if they are do if they are doing slight changes that's that's perfectly welcome and then this is like fully off topic but i just had to add it coin management with current game modes due to how hard it is for many not to get broke i see most of the players camping or running low end gears they are doing this because it feels like that's the only way um, to avoid losing all of their money coin i bet that skilled players would want to play more t5 t6 and juicy loadouts but they simply don't as doing so would make them you know one of the broke players and this applies to me as well i have the money to play t5 or t6 but i'm not playing it especially not if i'm solo because i would start losing it and it just doesn't make sense it forces me to run t4 you know semi-decent gear um i'm not good enough to ensure that the loadout that costs twice as much ensures double as many extractions that's that's said it's not worth it and this is what i say it's like t4 cost me 150 t5 and above good weapon costs me 300 000. uh and you know if i run that gear it doesn't mean that i extract double as um as often so i think this is this is actually a problem with higher storage values uh players would be less worried about losing everything which means that they would dress up in better equipment put it into action and i think the game itself would be more exciting we would see less campers less rats um and and yeah and the final thought here is is that if the game keeps taking away instead of giving like you keep losing stuff then it will lead to players you know having enough or quitting frustration like who wants to die all of the time and uh now this is the part where i'm talking about the loot derby itself 
the most striking feedback I see is that players are not happy that they uh, that nothing can be kept from the actual loot they are finding during the event. Giving the whole loot would be an overkill. It would extremely you know, boost the storage value of players, but like offering 10% or 20%, you know, nobody would be harmed if, if that would happen. And uh, people would instantly start playing as it would mean free money, actual free money. And because there would be more players playing, the competition would be even higher. Um, Rank-based rewards should be even on top. I mean that your placement and what you get for that placement should be on top of the 10 or 20% of the stuff you uh, you collect during the loot derby. Um, and then, yeah, there's a note that I understand that the likeliness of buying coin is less if players have more money or money or coin and, and bigger storage value. But I think the primary income for arena breakout shouldn't be, uh, you know, players buying bonds to convert them into coins some of the players are gonna buy some bundles which is perfectly fine but we have the elite pass we have the battle pass we have the composite case and and we have the skins i'm not gonna talk like uh, about the skins in a detailed way but skins if if they would cost less i bet that people would start buying them now it's like like crazy expensive crazy expensive like, like massively expensive it's it's way beyond expensive, but these should be the primary incomes, not, you know, the, the broke guys. Um, so that, um, that, that's my point of view. And even if they buy some coin, if they lose it, then the, this is going to be the end of the road. So if I would put actual real money into the game and then I lose it again, then I would say this is not for me. All right. In terms of time frame, I rather have one week for the warm up and then another week for the frenzy, regardless of age and circumstances. Um, the given time time frame might not suit the person, which is absolutely true for me. I mean, you know, the Friday, Saturday, Sunday is usually time spent with my family, so I wasn't really active during the loot derby. I don't see why it's like restricted to three days. Um, in terms of loadout, I think the loadouts are great. I wouldn't wouldn't make any massive changes. And this is a this is an idea I had. To spice up things, maybe the TDM model could be applied where you cannot select your loadout before the game starts. Um, it would be that the game starts, the loot derby starts, and then you would end up like in an SMG loot derby or sniper loot derby or assault rifle loot derby and in that case everybody who is in that lobby would be able to choose only smgs or only pistols or only ars or whatever i think i think it would i think it would be fun maybe it's a bad idea let me know considering that this is a solo performance event i would consider the following two options not allowing to queue up as a team and have three random teammates which would by the way solve the armor boost problem or issue i'm not even sure if it's an issue but what happens if that if is that if you team up with friends then you pick the best gun one of your teammates uh pick best armor and then he gives you the armor then you have the best armor um gun combination uh which is like slightly boosting but it's, it's it, I, I don't have an issue with that and the second option or second recommendation making it fully solo um, without having teammates and everybody would be solo on the map. So that would be the real solo performance loot derby in my opinion. And I'm adding here that I know that there are not endless spawns, but they could easily extend it to have 16 or 24 players on a single map, like farm. I'm, I'm sure it's doable uh, and then it would be like free for all with 24 players. And that's it. Thanks again for listening and considering my feedback. And guys, I, I don't know who's going to read this. I don't know if this is going to be put in front of the devs. I don't know if the devs are going to agree with what I'm saying. But um, um, the fact that I have been asked to provide feedback is a good sign. So keep um, sharing your opinions. We need to speak up. Otherwise, if you just mumble and, you know, write you know, comments or discord or uh, we're, we're just yapping around, then nobody's going to hear us. It's definitely good for the development team to hear the opinion of actual players. So keep them coming, spam the comment section. And if 
there's another topic you want me to cover in a similar fashion, then let me know. But now um, I'm gonna go back to gameplay videos because I think I published like three or four videos in a row without showing you any gameplay. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Shoot, loot, subscribe. See you in the next one. Shady out. Bye.